Hello Saxo fans, welcome back. Episode 8, today's the day, Underseal is going to happen. No messing about today, no amount of chat, I'm just going to get in and do it. First job, dust sheets, just to protect everything I don't want Underseal to go on, because it can go everywhere. Let's go straight to it. Right, you've seen me mask the car up, that's now ready. Time to mix the Raptor. So we've got three things, the actual Raptor itself, the hardener, and the colour. I have a mixing jug here, just need to find something to stir it with. Okay, got that wooden spoon is gonna be sacrificed. Put some gloves on, I always forget to do this bit. Okay, first job, it says on the instructions, if we're using the big kit where we've got colour to add to four bottles, uh, it advises us to mix it in a jug first. You can put the hardener and colour straight into here with the measuring jug they provide, which I will use, but as I've got four to do and I want the colour to be, the colour mix to be right, I'm going to get it all in, so empty all this out. We'll use this bottle again. Then I need to add some hardener. Now this jug they provide comes pre-marked pre with eight fluid ounces, so we'll get that in. What I'm going to do is just pop a bit in here as well. Put the lid back on that. Get as much out as we can now. And then it says to add 10% as a volume. So I've got here 900 litres, sorry, 900 um, mil. 
So I'm going to add 90 of colour. So hopefully you can see this colour. I'll put the light on it for you. It's really difficult to see. There we go. And then we'll mix away. So from everything that I read online and everything that I watched about using this stuff, mixing it in the jug with the colour is a far better approach. You get a much better mix. You can see I've had to mix that quite a lot to get it fully penetrated into there. Right, let's get it in here. Sealed, so we'll get rid of that. Mixed, happy with that. Let's tidy up this. Pop the gun in. There we go, that is now ready to spray. We'll go and do a test piece first. Okay, that is under seal, done for the rear third of the car, kind of breaking it down into thirds. I stopped at the arches because I simply ran out and I thought I don't want to make up another litre of this just to do the arches. I've, I've got to do more anyway, so I'll do that 
uh, next time. Let's have a quick look at what the article, the finished article looks like, albeit it's not dry yet. So I'll show you again when it's dry. Here we go then. So it's very difficult to see and obviously I'm losing the light as well. But really good coverage. Really pleased with the finish. Looks reasonably uniform. Happy with the colour as well. It is darker than perhaps what it looks like in the picture. It almost looks green, like a, like a almost olive greeny in, in the pictures, but I assure you it is very much grey. Dark grey as well, which I'm sure some of you will be delighted to hear. But I'm happy with that. So we'll have a look at what it looks like when it's dry. Right, I lied. Confession. I am going to mix some more up. Might mean I waste a little bit of it, but I want to get the rear arches done. But if I put the rear axle in and I have to mask it all up to put some more thunder seal on it, it's going to be such a pain. Just take the hit now, do it properly while it's all ready. It's dead easy. Let's do some more. Okay, sprayed the extra bit of under seal. That's gone on really well. Happy to get the, the same mixture of colour as well. Obviously, it's all done on, on volume, so um, nice and easy. So, a quick look at the arches. So, they're still wet. But quite pleased with that, considering there was weld patches here and here, you can't really see. I'm really pleased with the colour. So I gave, I gave underneath a second coat. It does actually advise to do two or three coats of this, so second coat, a bit lighter than the other one. But I'm pleased with how that's turned out. Let's get on to something else. Rear axles arrived, happy days. Here we are then, standard Saxo 106 rear axle, albeit a couple of minor modifications. Number one, gone for some nylon bushes. I can't remember the name of them. I'll flash it up on the screen. They're freely available, about 60 quid for the, for the set. There's four of them. Standard torsion bars, all in the original um, colors. Standard tube, again, in the original color. Um, there's a 24 mil anti-roll bar in here, should hopefully um, sort the ride out. A couple of jobs left to do on this. These, I'm going to give them a quick wire wheel, get them just cleaned up and, and paint them. ABS, I'm still undecided whether I'm going to run ABS yet, uh, but I can leave all that on there. Managed to get the ABS sensors out, which is great. So it's all been powder coated really nicely, albeit there's a couple of issues. Uh, which I've, we've uh, dropped uh, Steph a note about. So just wait on resolution for that. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Considering what it was before, I'll flash a picture up to remind you about what it looked like. I think that's a massive transformation. I'm really pleased with it. I can't wait to get it on. Right, here we are. So a little update for under the car. It's all dry. I'll try and show you without any LED lighting so you get a better idea of the colour, which is difficult to show. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the colour, looks pretty good. So, I'm actually officially going to put on the first part that has been refurbished back onto the car. Monumental moment. And this is the harness bar for the ABS. Pretty substantial bracket, just for a bit of wiring. Gone for some stainless steel nylon nuts for these, just because the ones that came off were horrendous and not worth saving.
There we go. That's the first thing officially fitted back onto the car. Okay, back to the rear axle. So I started yesterday putting stuff onto it. I'll quickly show you, just to see what some of the items would look like. Just things like the brakes and all that kind of thing, uh, the, and the, the washers and the bolts, and <clears throat> just getting my eye back in for where they all went. However, the axle is going back to Steph. Um, I spoke to him yesterday about the damage on the torsion bar and on the beam, just the, the powder coat chipping off. You know, I paid quite a lot of money to have that done, and um, yeah, I want it to be right. It's one of those, I could put up with it, but I'd know it's there. And, and, and fair play to Steph, as soon as I mentioned it, he said, bring it back and I'll get it redone. So he's put it at the top of the pile to get redone. So unfortunately, I've got to pack it back up and send it back off, but hopefully it should be back within sort of 10 days, depending on how quick the powder gators can turn it around. So a bit of a shame, but it's worth... It's worth doing it right, and, and, and thanks to Steph as well, because he's been, he's been really good about it and uh, has not questioned it at all. So, um, yeah, that, down to the shipper, I guess, which is um, it's a shame because it was packaged really well, so they must have really played football with it, but it is what it is. Right, can't really do much without an axle, but there is plenty of other things that I can be getting on with, so I'm going to turn my attention to the sills. Now, I did get to a little bit of this before. You can just see... Obviously, I've done a bit here, but the rest of it underneath looks pretty scabby. So, I'll get all these clips removed, get it rubbed down, and we'll get it in the same Tetra under seal as the other stuff, and get them looking tidy. They're pretty straight, I'm really pleased, and that's half the reason why I bought this car, is that the sills weren't completely mashed, and, and they're not mega, mega rusty. So I've got a good base to work with, it's just a case of making them look tidy and protecting them for the future. So the first step is to get those clips out. Okay, clips out. Next step is the nylon grinding wheels. Let's get on with that. Got as far as I can with the nylon wheels, some few little tricky areas it can't quite get into, it's a bit too big. So I'm gonna swap over now to the wire wheel in the drill. Okay, wire wheel is done. There's a couple of little places here where the, the lip has just been rolled over. I think someone's obviously jacked it up in the wrong place. Numpties. So I'll straighten those out before we give everything else a little bit more of a clean up and we'll get it primed. So, some of you may be wondering why I'm masking this high up. Well, obviously this is the, the sill that is all hidden by the side skirt anyway, so you won't really see this, but this little bit here you do see when you open the door, but you can see how much of a battering it's taken you know, over the years. It's all chipped away and you do see that, so I thought what better way than to put a nice solid layer of under seal there um, and cover up the, the, the nasty chips. I think it will look decent and last and prevent any rust, obviously. That's why.
There we go. First light coat done. We'll let that go off and then we'll do it again. Okay, done a second coat of primer. Gonna let that go off for a few hours, probably for the rest of the day. And then we can put the uh, texture on. In the meantime, Project Life, all the things I've ordered over the few weeks, massive pile of cardboard. Got to go and get rid of it. So I'm taking it to the tip. Right, all masked up. Stop the any overspray. Time for the uh, <coughs> for the shuts again. Same stuff that was on the lower rear three quarters again. You won't see any of this. It'll all be hidden under the underskirts. So it doesn't have to be super tidy. There you go then. Under seal process, albeit only part of the car. But we got there in the end after talking about it for perhaps seven episodes. We got there in the end. And I think it looks great as well. A mixture of the black for the areas you won't see and the, the dark grey for the areas that you will see. Well, if you're looking under the car, that is. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of a shame the axles have to go back. It has slowed things down. It means I can't really put a huge amount of stuff back on the car at the moment. But it is what it is. Uh, again, I want to say thanks to Steph. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Sorted it out, arranged delivery, collection, all that kind of stuff, but no, at no cost to me. So uh, he's been great. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.